Pisces, hello and welcome to your weekly reading for the week of September 1st through to the 7th. So we are in prime Virgo season real estate and we have a partial lunar eclipse happening on the 17th of September and this week we start the week out with a new moon. So ultimately we are setting ourselves up for cycles that will either advance and make more clear what is required in our relationships pisces virgo being your opposing energy for my pisces suns this is your sixth house for my pisces risings this is your sixth house the difference between the sun and the rising sign is that your soul is represented by your heart just represented by the sun and the rising sun is like your body vehicle and how it's perceived as you move around the world and in your um, connections and your relationships to others. So I'm going to pull from the Goddess Power Oracle to get us started. A message from Pisces, my dear Goddess Oracle. Can we get a card, please? This looks good. Yuki Ona, stillness, 52. And the interesting thing about this upcoming partial lunar eclipse is that it's at 25 degrees Pisces. So with this new moon setting us up for the Virgo representation of, and I'm going to use the Wild Unknown Tarot by Kim Kranz to get five cards for this reading, um, is that we're being set up to be in prime Virgo energy and that partial lunar eclipse is prime Piscean energy. So I would say that in your daily life and in your spiritual life, Pisces, you're going to set the record straight. Our first card is the warrior. You're going to know which frequency you belong on, on a daily basis, which energy you desire to um, make your life in alignment with who you are, who you're becoming, what you need on a daily basis to feel in alignment with where you're going. We have the underworld as our second card. And then you guys got a couple jumpers. So I'll just take three of those. We have the poet with the underworld. We have the shapeshifter. And we have the mystic. So it seems that you Pisces, in getting still, you're going to have sort of like a death rebirth awakening. And um, you see how I'm kind of like dancing from placement to placement with a push out and then the tide is coming in it's almost like this oceanic vibe with your reading so far but to start the week off we have pluto retrograding into capricorn and for pisces that's your 12th house so maybe the ways that you guys have sought to control outer world circumstances i'm sorry that's your 11th house so maybe the ways that you guys have sought to control outer world circumstances with your social groups your alignments to people um, your alignments to places, your alignments to brands, maybe even the way that you were showing your brand in the world is going to go through a deep cathartic release. With Pluto retrograding into Capricorn for you all in your 11th house, you might see some partnerships and some partnerships that are in alignment come through and empower you and give you a much more reason, much more affirming reason to be yourself to reclaim your beauty, your uniqueness, your authenticity in the world. And I'm going to start out with reading the warrior card. This song by Coco Rosie, Rainbow Warriors, is coming to mind. They're really interesting, like their whole approach to music. They're two sisters who, um, for the sound quality that they wanted, they were making their music in a bathtub, I think in Paris. And they use like a xylophone, um, megaphone, like all sorts of kids' toys to make what they've made and to make a name for themselves, frankly. All right, so the warrior is the samurai, the soldier, the advocate. And I love this for you guys because, okay, let's just get into the astrology of it. Neptune being retrograde at 29 degrees. You guys are meant to take spirituality to new heights. That's what your ruling planet is asking of you. And I sense that if this card is representing the samurai, the warrior, um, the soldier, and the advocate, which is also like the Italian word for lawyer, 
you guys have made your case. You have said it loud and clear. You've shown up. You've been steeped in this energy of connecting with your I am, your higher self. You're all, um, all present awareness. You've been present, more, maybe more so than ever because of um, Pluto going into your 12th house and destroying the old ways that you would allow for your frequency to be maybe manipulated or swayed and you potentially would come out of your authenticity to be liked or to be acceptable. But really that's not called for. What's called for is you all claiming your right to stillness. And what that requires, we could be active, we could be present and yet still deeply in that self, deeply in our bodies to where there might be changes happening in, through, and around us, but we know who we are because we're touching the Godhead, we're touching that heart, that divinity, that truth. We often envision the warrior as an armored figure with a sword in hand, moving blindly toward battle, yet the deeper aspect of this archetype brings us face to face with death itself, which you guys have the underworld. The warrior stands precariously at the edge of life and death, trusting the eternal to guide the sword's blade. The warrior's work requires presence, alignment, and purpose. If and when the warrior loses its center, meaningless confrontations and violence are their default response. When this card appears, it's important to question the battle at hand. It is likely a great one with deep roots and long-standing tensions. The actions you take will stay with you long after the dust settles. So choose wisely, brave one. As you draw your sword, which I would say is your truth, that's what that Ace of Earth, and I'm sorry, the Ace of Swords tends to represent. We'll get another clarifier from the Dolly deck. As you draw your sword, realign with the eternal wisdom within, then surrender to the battle. So in light, this energy is fierce clarity, purposeful action, resolve, resilience, and when dark threats, savagery, abandoning mission and values. So with this, we got the seven of earth. And maybe you guys are concerned about needing to fight for something that you are afraid is gonna slip through your fingers, but just trust that whatever's for you will not go past you. I've said that in readings, and then I have a Pisces friend who shared that this is like a, that's like a common phrase where she's traveling in Scotland. So for the underworld, I'm gonna pull a clarifier. We go from the seven to the knight of coins. So now let's get the underworld cards meaning. The nightmare, the ordeal, or the bottom. This is no time to mince words. This archetypal territory of the underworld is fraught with nightmare, suffering, and pain. It's the darkest shadow realm, which we try vigilantly to avoid or deny at any cost. That's like the pinnacle of what this, and you kind of see it here in the card, right? It's like this seven of earth figure with the spider there. She's like seeing all of her, the fruits of her labor going to rot. And I'm sorry, it's kind of like a grotesque card, but get your hands in some soil. You'll see something similar to this if you dig deep enough. And I sense that maybe at the bottom of your fears is this worry that you can't come out of that. But look, you have both the warrior and the knight of coins. So it's just showing that with Aries as your first house for my, or your second house for my Pisces risings, and then it's your second house in general, you all asserting yourself is going to bring a lot of value. It's going to bring a lot of healing because Chiron's there and the North Node is there. And at the time that I'm looking at the chart, September 1st, there is a trine. Well, there's just, a, yeah, there's a trine between um, Chiron at 22 degrees Aries and Mercury retrograde at 22, or Mercury direct at 22 degrees Leo. So Mercury stations direct on the 28th today at the time of my reading this. And you guys will have maybe a more profound forward step. It's going to feel like, you know, you're carrying a boulder on your back, but you're stepping up a icy, rocky terrain, but you have the momentum of your soul. You have the momentum of purpose. You have the momentum of passion, and that's your driving force. That is your staying power. 
All right, let's continue with the underworld. Try as we might, the darkness pulls us into its depths through disturbing dream images, unexpected accidents, illness, war, conflict, and ultimately death. Excuse me. Not visiting the underworld or denying its existence altogether is what gives it dangerous power. Traversing it forces us to bow humbly to the greater forces that be, while summoning the inner strength we previously underestimated. Take solace that the underworld subsumes everyone from time to time, making us deeper friends, more intimate partners, soldiers of light amid our shadowy times. Facing darkness and choosing light is the most profound calling of all. So when light, bravery, depth, facing of deepest fears, when dark, denial, suppression, evil, unconsciousness. And evil is that unripe fruit, so it's like trying to grab for things and people and places and external forms of validation that are not in alignment with where you are, if you're honest with yourself. So let's read the Nine of Coins, uh, practical advice, and then I'm going to keep it moving. Forgive yourself and others for not being perfect. Even the garbage, which is that underworld energy of compost, that we all produce can still be used as manure and hummus, which is that sedentary layer um, on most, in most bodies of water. You cannot change your fellow human beings, but you can accept them as they are and help them to use their talents to the greatest effect. And this image is the journey of the Magi, which I, I sense that, um, okay, now I, gotta, now I gotta read the whole thing because it's a good one. Sowing and reaping. This card shows a person who has found his proverbial place in the sun. This is all about your ability to organize your life, turn insights into practical solutions instead of sweeping problems under the carpet. There is much to be harvested in your life. The huge billowing red flag symbolizes the tremendous strength and almost unlimited power of a person who has found their way back to the sun, to the fire and the source of light, which, life, which is your heart, which is your soul. By understanding your purpose and your needs, you will ensure a bountiful harvest. But you should pay attention to the fact that this card is the only one of the coin suit that does not show a coin. We see only five quite large red spots on a shining white area in the sky. This could be interpreted negatively. Your talent falls to pieces for lack of connecting circle or framework. The whole dissolves into parts because you focus too much on the details. In a positive sense, the same symbol could be interpreted as kind of a kind of explosion. If you truly have become yourself and found your place in the world and with God, no borders will be able to contain or limit you. It's actually the small things, the seemingly insignificant, that take on a special significance. By exploring your current contradictions, you will gain experience and develop a deep sense of tranquility. Do not be afraid of conflicts. On the contrary, seek them out at the right time. Strengthen your faith in your ability to solve problems to conquer fears and to f fulfill your desires. Cool. Now we have the poets, which Rumi is now going to need to come forth. I feel like that's a very significant card to get with me having the Rumi deck. And we see that there's more of an Edgar Allan Poe theme here, but he's holding the moon in his hands, which to me is this very inevita inevitable rapid growth that you guys are going to experience with the full moon or the partial lunar eclipse in Pisces, which is a full moon, full lunation. And then from there, um, there's going to be the next full moon. That's not an eclipse will be, um, Aries in October, which I can't remember exactly what degree that will be at, but it's going to be a, it's going to be in Aries, which is your second house. So by October, the full moon that's happening at that time. Let's check. October 17th at 24 degrees Aries. You guys, I think I sense will have um, a synchronized creative output with what your needs are. Like whatever your monetary needs are, you're going to start to get into a creative flow and release the inhibitions you have around your creative project. So we have the Divine Mother Manifest, which if you all know, 15 nets to a six. So it's allowing for yourself to combine your resources, to combine your intentions, and to make conscious efforts towards 
manifesting this eternal sense of love and acceptance which the divine mother will provide we're going to check her out and then we're going to check out the poet from the wild unknown all right divine mother manifests oh you living in the world of six directions accept the gloom accept the bliss for those seeds buried in the ground will one day grow into fruitful orchards very much affirming this Virgo season and all that we are going to experience, um, the revelations, the changes, the emotional release, the rebalancing, all orbiting in the seven, the, the partial lunar eclipse on September 17th, Pisces. All right, so we pray for light, we pray for love, we honor and live our lives with its mysteries, with as much integrity as we can muster. But beyond that, it is best to participate in this life with much less certainty than the mind would have us believe necessary for inner peace. Inner peace doesn't come with an understanding, it comes with trusting. Can we understand a star or a galaxy? Perhaps not. Yet, we can choose to trust in its beauty and beingness and from it derive great energy, hope, and inspiration. The ways of the Divine Mother are not to be judged by our limited standards, rather than can be witnessed, experienced, and received. What a relief to know that we don't need to understand. What a relief to simply live with trust and to know that everything will work its way out. You're being asked to receive this gift. Maybe you're going to receive a gift of poetry. You're being asked to receive this gift completely and utterly. Whether you feel sufficiently worthy or not, or appropriately and readily attired, it is time, and the bestowal of this gift is as it should be. Whether it seems to be in the best form, or how it should be according to your opinion or the opinion of others, it is as the Divine Mother has accorded it to be. She has her wild ways, of course, and oftentimes her workings in the world are, to put it mildly, downright unfathomable. unfathomable. Yet somehow all things, all creations, all of life, her every working serve love. Ooh. And so it is. Let's see what the poet has to say. The artist, the witness, the truth teller. The poet's work is to feel immensely and not be afraid. They must seek out truth in the darkest corners of the world. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. The poet's work is to feel immensely and not be afraid. They must seek out truth in the darkest corners of the world and carry it back for all to see. This unique capacity resides within us all, regardless of our relationship to creativity. When the poet energy is present, there is a call for deep honesty and reflection. For seeing the big picture within the little one, the poet rides effortlessly between the personal and the universal. It's possible that others may not seem to listen or care about the poet's work, but do not be discouraged. I love how these colors kind of like, they're co-manifesting. It's like, She's holding that same moon that are, is being held by this. And this one's black, but the one that she's holding is green. So even if it's like the darkest dark night of the soul, just trust that the Divine Mother is manifesting a way out for you, Pisces. And that's so beautiful. You just have to embrace all of your feelings and let them come up to the surface. The words of the poet ring true for centuries to come, soothing the wounds of despair and violence that captivate our world. The poet's work is never finished. Find your voice and trust the wind will carry it. When light, clairvoyant, wise, timeless, when dark, harmful words, sharp tongue, thwarted cre creativity. So what online battles are catching y'all? Because I'm learning to slowly but certainly extract myself from a need to be a part of the battle of Armageddon right now and to be a part of the solution. I'm still human, I still slip up, I still make decisions that my higher self is like, come on, we have creations to make. And it's so easy to get caught in these, you know, who's right and who's wrong, who's gonna prove themselves as the most worthy, but the Divine Mother doesn't look at it like that. 
So we have the seven of swords for the shapeshifter. I sense that it's the shapeshifter. This is so valuable, Pisces. You guys have to be with that seven completely delusional about how successful you're going to be once you start to stand in yourself in your in what you feel and not try and be pleasing to other people stop trying to get a thousand likes on your posts the point of sharing when it's coming from a sincere place will be felt and right now you might have a smaller audience who really likes you in your authenticity and you might have a large audience who likes to see a picture of you like you know, doing the success thing and making yourself out to be better than or more worthy than. But trust me when I say, once you grasp your reason for doing things, everything else will be a lot more clear. You'll have your compass guiding you and you won't be um, pulled around and pushed around by the algorithm. You won't be pulled around and pushed around by people's perceptions of you, which are always based on who they see themselves as. So when Pisces are clear in taking spirituality to the next level, with this uh, partial lunar eclipse Pisces, excuse me, you guys are going to come to more clearly know yourself and know your intuition and know what feelings and thinking aligns for you to be tapped into your intuition. Because when we criticize ourselves or when we criticize others even, it shuts down our creativity. It puts us in a framework of being susceptible to be judged by ourself or others and to actually take that as more important than the divine energy flowing through if we allow it. All right, so the shapeshifter. The trickster, the elusive, the formless. The shapeshifter has a love of theater, games, and trickery. Its energy appears as one thing, only to reveal a more complex story below the surface. The shapeshifter is within all of us to some degree, and I would even say in very successful like stories, movies, projects, there's always something more interesting underneath the surface. The shapeshifter is the side of ourselves that is slippery, non-committal, and experimental and longs to dismiss the rules. We need its energy to adapt to the ever-changing landscape of our existence. When the shapeshifter card appears, it's important to imagine you are looking at life through a kaleidoscope rather than a single focus lens. At any moment, the scene may shift, revealing a more enchanting vision than you imagined. Be wary though, as the allure of the kaleidoscope can leave you exhausted and yearning for solid ground. Dancing long-term with a shape shapeshifter requires a central pillar of integrity that links us back to our center. And that's what the Seven of Swords is saying, is like to know your reason for doing things and to be really clear on that, but to have fun with the presentation. Make it theatrical. Um, you guys have Leo in your sixth house, so that's kind of like your assignment in this life is to be as theatrical and performative as you can be and to allow for that alluring energy of your heart getting to express itself in non-committal ways you you could be that unreliable narrator that's why i love nabokov and that's why nabokov's works have lived on i i haven't looked at his chart but i will i'll have to look at it pisces and it's just going to say that your created your creative potential knows no limitations it's just the limitations that you impose upon it to be pleasing all right so the practical advice of this one Reevaluate all that you take for granted. Take a break for an hour or a whole day. Allow yourself to do something foolish. See to your needs so that they may benefit yourself and others in the long term. Say goodbye to aims and ambitions which no longer serve you. Pay attention to your dreams and your life's wishes. Okay. And for the mystic, the mother piece wants to come through. So we're going to read. Oh, here we go. Chariot. Hey, hola. I love this chariot card. How cool. And we see Cancer. That's you all's fifth house at the top of it. So romanticizing your life, playing, having fun with your friends. Maybe there's an older wisdom keeper who you can go to for some advice or guidance if you need it who you see this apple tree, it's bearing a lot of fruit. It speaks to this person's ability to lend a hand from a place of abundance. And the mystic.
The seer, the light worker, and the dreamer. The mystic is often misunderstood in our culture, depicted as a wandering or lighthearted daydreamer. Yet, like Shiva, the true mystic plays a critical role in society, remaining fearlessly dedicated to the path of transformation. In order to save the earth from darkness, Shiva swallows the poison of the world and holds it in his throat, slowly transmuting the liquid into nectar. This is the work of the mystic. They do not fear darkness, but rather sit in the presence of it, harness the potential and latent energy behind it and embed it with light. They are patient and prudent change makers seeking growth above all else. Unanswerable questions are the mystic's lifeblood. The mystic revels in the mystery, in the great riddle of life, dancing with the forces of light and dark upon its wings. Okay, so one final card from Healing Waters, Pisces. I just got so many revelations as I was giving that a read. I just sense you guys are off to something amazing. And you might just need to sage your house to um, get new crystals that support your creative process. We have the pink dolphin, celebration, fun, unbridled joy, open heart. Again, this is Virgo season. I'm so happy we got to this point. This is Virgo season, so it's the season of the sixth house. Because Leo rules your sixth house, it's time to step it up a notch. No matter how much joy you think you've been giving yourself, like, for feeding it spoonful, you might have been holding it here in the throat chakra, not allowing it to get into the heart. So we need to maybe have something fun to drink. If you grew up loving Capri Suns, maybe maybe not Capri Sun, maybe something a little healthier, but you can make something that feels like your own special juice, your own special, like you guys know I like to juice with lemons. Like I, I consume around six to eight lemons a day. And it's something that makes me feel motivated. I actually get that fire in my belly because I juice a lot of ginger and turmeric. It actually like puts me to work, not a game. So Pisces, no matter what it is that you do to fuel your passion, do it with the intelligence of Virgo, but the open-hearted joy, the unbridled joy of Leo. And I love, I used to call Krishna the blue guy. You see this blue figure that is representing cancer, that is representing things moving forward. And I just sense you guys are onto something amazing. Keep me posted. Affirm in the comments. I will receive a gift this week that moves my life story forward. Pay attention to your dreams. And until next time, Pisces, aloha.